your first ever custom PC can be quite an undertaking, since you need to take a significant number of seemingly disparate things into consideration. Obviously, you have to make sure that all the hardware components are compatible with one another and also that they physically fit. But that's just the start of it. You also have to make sure that all of your components are proportionally powerful, else you'll end up with what's known as bottlenecking. But while the whole of the internet unanimously agrees that bottlenecking is bad, much less is said about the degree to which it can be detrimental and what you can do about it. So that's why we've made this video. We'll go over all the things related to bottlenecking, from what it is and its most common types, to ways to calculate and avoid it. So without any further ado, let's begin. The term bottlenecking should be pretty self-explanatory. In actual bottles, the neck is the narrowest part so as to restrict the amount of liquid that can escape the bottle at any given time. If you were to pour wine by the bucket full, you'd just need a single swing to splash it all across whatever your intended target is. Whereas you get a steady and manageable flow of wine when pouring from a bottle. So in real life, bottlenecks are a very welcome invention that make our lives easier. But in the digital world, they're used in a much more negative context. In layman's terms, real bottlenecks, good. Hardware bottlenecks, bad. To extend the previous wine analogy, try and imagine PC components as the bottle and the peak performance you can get while gaming as the wine. In this case, you don't want the bottle to narrow down anywhere. You want it to have a distinctly unbottle-like cylindrical shape, since adding a bottleneck would restrict the wine outflow, or in this case, hamper the performance. So in the context of computer hardware, a bottleneck refers to a subpar performance caused by the inability of one of the components to keep up with the others. You could even have more than one component causing the problem, but even just one is enough to slow down the PC's ability to process data. And in the context of gaming, this always results in lower FPS counts. Now, a bottleneck can be caused by any component that's significantly weaker than the rest. It could be the CPU, GPU, RAM, or even HDD storage that's the root of this performance issue. But in 2020, and for the purposes of gaming, we usually refer to either the CPU or the GPU when we talk about bottlenecking. So those are the two components that we'll be covering in this video. When it comes to CPU and GPU bottlenecks, we can have it one of two ways. Either the GPU is not performing at 100% capacity because of an underpowered CPU, or it's the other way around. In either case, you're getting fewer FPS than you paid for. However, CPU bottlenecks are the more common of the two, since the GPU is by far the most important piece of hardware for gaming, and this means that gamers are always looking to get as beefy a GPU as their budget will allow, often at the expense of the CPU. For example, let's say you have the money to buy a balanced build that includes the likes of a GTX 1660 Ti and the Intel i5-9600K. You may very well get the knee-jerk reflex to buy the more powerful and more expensive RTX 2060S instead. After all, the GPU is by far the most important piece of hardware for gaming. But since your overall budget is set, you'd likely have to deduct the price difference between these two GPUs from some other piece of hardware. Most likely, it's the CPU. So instead of the i5-9600K, you get the noticeably cheaper and less powerful i3-9100. And herein lies the problem. The i3-9100 is a budget CPU that simply cannot keep up with the RTX 2060S. Even the GTX 1660 Ti would be too much for it, if we're being honest. And as a result of this, the RTX 2060S wouldn't be able to work at a maximum capacity, since the CPU just couldn't process the data and issue the instructions fast enough. Or to use the previous analogy, you wouldn't be able to pour the wine fast enough because of the bottleneck. In this example, the RTX 2060S would only work at about 70% of its maximum capacity, which is far from ideal. Now, just because a CPU bottlenecking is much more common doesn't mean that there aren't cases of GPU bottlenecking out there. For whatever reason, someone may pair up the mid-range GTX 1660 Ti GPU with, say, the high-end Ryzen 3800X CPU. In terms of raw power, this would be like comparing Batman and Superman on their ability to shoot lasers out of their eyes. There's simply no context here. 
To put it simply, the CPU would be able to kick back and relax while keeping pace with the GPU that's giving its 100%. Needless to say, a PC with these specs would show a complete lack of understanding on the builder's part of what's important for games to run well. Either that or it's a workstation that's only used for gaming on the side. But since here at Gaming Scan, gaming is our primary concern, we'll conclude that as a rule, you should focus on the GPU and only make sure that the CPU is good enough to enable it to reach its full potential. The GPU is the component that does all the heavy lifting after all, and no amount of extra CPU processing power will translate into a higher in-game FPS count. Although getting a slightly more powerful CPU than needed would allow for future GPU upgrades down the line, which is why some gamers purposely build into it. In either case, it's an undesirable state of affairs unless it's there by design. So now that we know what bottlenecking is, let's take a look at how you can find out whether your PC suffers from it and which component is at fault. And really, the easiest way to test for bottlenecks is to use the monitoring software that comes with your CPU or your GPU. This includes the likes of MSI Afterburner, Asus GPU Tweak, the AMD Control Center, just to name a few. Now, when the PC is under heavy load, which will happen if you're running a demanding game, you will easily be able to check the CPU and the GPU loads using these pieces of software. If the CPU is running at 100% capacity, but the GPU is taking it easy, then the CPU is what's causing the bottleneck. Conversely, if the GPU is operating in 100% load, but the CPU is taking it easy, then it's the GPU that's causing the bottleneck. It's important to note that not all games are optimized in the same way, so some will put more strain on the CPU than others. What's more, we simply have to highlight the fact that there will always be some disparity between the GPU and the CPU loads. Having both of them operate at exactly 100% capacity while gaming isn't something you should really expect to see often. So it's important to make a distinction between small and large bottlenecks. If one of the two components is at maximum load and the other is hovering around 90% capacity, that's great. That is an insignificant bottleneck and nothing to worry about. However, if one component is blasting away at maximum capacity while the other is giving it a breezy 70%, then you're dealing with a significant bottleneck and losing out on a large chunk of potential performance. Another way to check for potential bottlenecking before you even buy the components is by using one of the various online bottleneck calculators. These sites let you specify exactly which CPU and GPU model you want to use, along with the amount of RAM, and then it uses this information to arrive at an approximate bottleneck percentage. Once again, the actual amount of in-game bottlenecking will vary from game to game, so you shouldn't take these numbers as irrefutable facts. That said, they can still give you a good estimate of just how proportionally or disproportionately powerful your CPU and GPU are. We highly recommend using one of these calculators while you're planning out your PC build so that you can avoid any unnecessary headaches later on. Especially since there's no real way to fix bottlenecking once the hardware has been bought and installed. Nothing short of replacing one of the components will help properly balance them out, so the sooner you get on top of this conundrum, the better. If all of this sounds too confusing and you'd rather just buy a pre-built PC, you can still get custom PC value without any of the extra work by referring to one of our custom PC builds. The links to both the calculator and these builds are in the description. And that about does it for this video. To summarize, bottlenecking is an unavoidable byproduct of the power discrepancy between the GPU and the CPU. The RAM and storage can play a part in bottlenecking as well, but for gaming, they're not nearly as important in this sense. So long as you're hitting around 90% of your component's maximum capacity, there's nothing to worry about. But any less than that, and you have to start wondering, why did I buy such a powerful GPU in the first place if it's unable to dish out the kind of FPS counts that it should? So in order to avoid asking yourself such tiresomely philosophical questions in the future, just remember to use a bottleneck calculator before you do any hardware purchasing. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment. 
and if you think your friends could benefit from seeing this, help them out by sharing it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click on the bell icon so that you don't miss on any. We upload new videos every week, so the next one is right around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.